Hello everybody! With Adobe's latest release of Lightroom, they've added in a really cool feature into the masking section. Now, uh, most photographers, and certainly nighttime photographers, are going to need to make local adjustments, and that would be your gradient tool, your local adjustment brush, your radial filter. Um, all of these are ways to adjust your image locally. And up to this point, they've been pretty robust, but Lightroom, or rather Adobe, has added in a really cool feature called range mask. So let's take a look at how this looks. First of all, when we um, use a local adjustment brush and we click on it, what's going to happen is this box pops out and these are adjustments that are to be made inside of the mask. So for example, if I click on my adjustment brush here, out pops this box and I can make any changes I want and nothing happens to the image because I have yet to draw out my mask. So I'm going to double click effect here to reset all of these sliders. Now, um, I'll just do something really uh, over the top and increase the exposure. Now, wherever I paint, that adjustment comes through. And at this point, you can readdress the sliders and you can either darken that area or lighten that area or add contrast or whites and blacks, clarity, dehaze, anything that you want within that area. So the parts to this box is one, you define the area by painting. Two, you make adjustments over here on the right. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this mask by just clicking on that and deleting it. Next, let's look at the gradient filter. The gradient filter works in a, in a similar fashion in that you have to draw out something and then you make the adjustments. So I'm going to click here and what I'm doing is I'm dragging is I'm actually dragging the gradient itself. You can see how the very top is becoming quite bright and the bottom is, become, is remaining unchanged. Well, that's because my exposure slider is up. So if I moved it down, this would be getting very dark, down to this mid-range of 50%, and then from this point down, there's zero effect on the image. All right. Now, let's reset that by double, or just by clicking on this pin and hitting the delete key. My goal in this image is to give the sky um, a little bit more of a blue hue and give the bottom a little bit more of a yellow hue, you know, to show how these uh, car lights are coming up, the, coming up the road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the word effect to reset. I know I want this to go into the blue range, so I'm going to randomly choose a point here. I am on my gradient filter, so I'm going to click and drag down. I don't care about how much gradient I have here, I'm just using this to quickly mask the sky. All right, now that's a little over the top, but I'm going to leave it that way for the moment. Um, at this point, some of this blue is leaking into the mountains, and we can see that by hitting Show Selected Overlay, and you can see where our mask actually is. So this is where we're going to go to our range mask and ask it to remove this part from the mask itself. And we can use either color or luminance. Let's start with luminance. I don't think it's going to work as well in this particular image because it's very dark up here. But the luminance um, will subtract from the selection by brightness value. So if I take my um, highlight slider here and move it downward, it's going to remove the white areas. Meaning that right now the only thing that's being affected is what's in red. And that's exactly what we don't want. All right, so I'll slide the slider back up. So that would mean if I move the shadows uh, slider here, I'd be starting to remove the shadows from the selection. And you can see as I do that, the mountains have become less selected. Now a neat little trick here is you can hold down your Alt key while doing that. Let me just push this back. Hold down your Alt key, and then as you move the slider, you're going to be able to see the white areas of the mask are what's going to be affected, and the black areas are going to have little or no effect. So at this point, we could see that the mountains are not going to be affected, but most of the sky is. Now we are missing some points up in here, but that's probably going to be okay. At this point, you could take your show selected mask overlay off and indeed see that there's no blue coming into the mountains. All right, let's try it a different way. Let's try it with color. The way the color works is that you're going to, let me click on the show selected mask overlay. You're going to click on this eyedropper and you're going to select the areas that you want to remain masked. 
So I do want this area masked. I don't want that. So I'm not going to click in the mountains, but I'll click here. And immediately you can see it removes almost everything, including most of the sky that I want selected. So instead of holding down my shift key and continuing to click, which you can do, and actually that works pretty well in this case, I'm just holding down my shift key and you can see I've got a little plus on my cursor and wherever I click, it's going to add that into the selection. Now, I suspect if I click too far up here into the dark area, it's also going to um, re-engage this dark area down here. I'll try it, and but I don't think it's going to work. Let's see, I'll click on that. And yes, see, it went back into the mountain. So I'm going to hit Command-Z on my Mac or Control-Z on a PC. Undo that last step. Um, at this point, this is as good as we're going to be able to get the mask. This value is too close in tone to this value up here. But the main part is I wanted a nice smooth edge around here and I can continue with that smooth edge by going down to the amount. And once again, you can hold down your alt key to see the effect. I'm going to hold down my alt key. And as I change the amount, you're going to be able to see you're adding some in or you're taking some away. So this is further control over the mask. So I'm just going to pull this up until most of the sky is selected and the mountains are barely selected at all. The darker the mountains are, the less of the change it's going to come through. And that to me looks pretty good. All right, so now we're ready to make our adjustments. I'm going to take my show selected mask overlay off. I'm going to reset my um, white balance because my eyes have become adjusted now to that garish blue. And I'm subtly just going to move my temperature down towards the left a little bit to add some blue into the sky and maybe just a touch more. All right, so now we've got uh, a blue sky and if we want to see the before and after, we can scroll down and click on this little black and white icon and you can see the before sky and then the after sky. Uh, just like I said, just a little touch of blue. Now let's do the same thing for the bottom. Let's create another mask. So while I'm still on my gradient tool here, I'm going to go to new and that turns that pin gray, meaning it's inactive, but I'm ready to create a new pin. Um, in this case, I want to warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to add some warmth and maybe even a little magenta to kind of give it an orange flavor. And I'm going to click here and drag upward this time so that the changes happen below. And just again, so you can see, if I cranked up my exposure, this is the area that's being affected. This area is not, and that's because I clicked from down below and drug upwards. All right, resetting the exposure here. Um, as you can see, we really cranked in some yellow and kind of gives it that nice gold feeling. Um, but again, we don't want to go over the top. We don't want to be too garish. So let's tone that down a touch. All right, now we just need to take some of that adjustment out of the sky itself. So what we'll do is we'll go down here to color range again and choose color. And again, we can see our show selected mask overlay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my eyedropper and I'm going to click down into these areas here. One time we'll set that area. Then I'm going to shift click to add in. And you can see that works pretty well. Uh, again, shift click, shift click. And that's pretty much taken all of that adjustment out of the sky. Just a little bit remains, but sometimes that little bit is often nice just to um, sort of gradiate the whole effect. But we can return to our amount and this will help us fine tune our mask. Go to the left a little bit and you can see it's taking more out of the sky. Go to the right a little bit, adds a little in. And we're going to go right into this area here. And most of the sky is now gone. And we are left with a little of this ring, though, and that concerns me. I don't want to go that far, so I'm going to take it back up and watch my mask here instead of using the black and white. Yes, that's better. We don't want to get these little uh, areas where you're seeing this sort of gray banding because that's, that's going to come out badly for us. All right, that much looks much better. See, now I've cleaned this up by just shift clicking and adding in to the selection. All right, we remove the mask and I'll place my eyedropper back in its little holder 
And again, we can readdress the color, maybe just make it a little warmer just so we get the idea of what we're doing here. A little bit more red to make it orange. All right, now let's see the before and after. This is without any gradient sets back to the original image and then with the gradient on. You can see we've subtly changed uh, the color of this image to give it some color contrast and we certainly could continue by going back um, and making any other adjustments we wanted. So if I wanted to go back to the original uh, uh, gradient, I would click now on that gradient and that shows me momentarily what I'm affecting and I could add some more blue in if I wanted and at this point um, adding a little bit of dehaze is always nice to a sky. It's going to make it a little bit more rich and crisp and once I've done that, I feel it's a little too blue, so I'll move my color balance back a little bit. There we go. And now let's readdress the bottom one. So I will click on the other gradient and let's see what that needs. Eh, maybe a touch more uh, saturation just to give it some overall effect. I'm pushing it a little towards the garish just so we get the idea. All right, and there you go, folks. So we've got the before and we've got the after. And you can see we've uh, improved this image quite a bit by using our gradient tool and the new range mask in Adobe Lightroom.